so we can pick up from where we were yes it's because I can never experience somebody else I won't be able to understand what's going on for him or another it's like I, I cannot understand another being experienced I can only project my understanding or interpretation of his experience and the experience is the ultimate it's the direct experience one is having therefore it's not that I'm trying to cap out is just that I cannot know I can just share with you my projected idea when I realize that my projections are distorted most of the time anyhow because I project that the Sun is rising and the Sun is is setting and it's not moving I'm projecting different I'm projecting that the sky is blue when the sky doesn't have color so I when you when one examine their thoughts sincerely then they see that you cannot rely and trust what the mind is telling itself because a lot of time it distorts the information it distorts the facts by forming a, an idea about the fact itself so I, I cannot know and um, more important is that just see if you can recognize glimpses of recognition of awareness within you and recognize that there is no movement of thought and then suddenly a thought appears and grabs your attention and just shift the attention to to an awareness that is just omnipresent without analyzing it is it the mind not the mind because then it's thoughts coming in and disturbing this peace and the more you experience peace then your harmony you're in harmony with what is even with the objects of the world with what is happening around you then you can be more clear that's all just in a simple way and let this take you in instead of just trying to understand and you can simultaneously and try to understand what's going on with science and philosophy yet the experience is what counts there is there is a story that I like to to read maybe I bring the book I'll read the story to all of us or oh, it's Anamalai Swami it's a yeah I, I, you know, I'm, I, <laughs> um, the, the philosophy you talk about is, 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 is solipsism, which basically is, is, is uh, you, can't, you can't tell what anybody else is experiencing because you are not that person, um, which makes a little bit of a point, well, it's first, I think it's a very egotistical argument, um, uh, the, the, the sort of solipsistic uh, approach that I only exist, nobody else exists because I only know myself. Uh, it's a sort of Kantian uh, Descartes notion, um, but if we if we if we start from that perspective, and then I don't think we get much further forward in, in discussion. Man is a social animal. We discuss, we talk, we philosophize, we we meet. Uh, you know, biologically, we're not supposed to be isolated species, um, and the purpose of, of relating experiences is is uh, is, um, is how society grows. Surely. So what, no. do you, so what do you suggest? <laughs> no, I mean, I'm just saying, you know, your, your point is, is well taken that, that your experience can only be your own. But if we, if, if we just left it like that, um, we wouldn't progress because, you know, the point of scientists discussing or doctors discussing is to come up with a, uh, a more unified approach in, in, in management of disease or, or, or approach to salvation or... Enlightenment. I mean, that's the purpose of, of discussion. Even though your experience cannot be translated 
and uh, in, inserted in my brain, um, there, you know, there, there is a. This is why. Doesn't mean you don't. This is why. There's time to speak and discussion, and there's time to be still and quiet, and to look within, because all the wisdom is from within. So. This is where we go to a retreat and we are, we are silent for 10 days, 30 days, 20 days, some one year. It doesn't matter that they go in and they really watch what arises within them and they direct their attention within. And then they can come out and share what they saw, experience. And this is where language would come to a point that it is a barrier and turns to be an obstacle. It's not an aid anymore. So it's an aid up to a particular point and turns to an obstacle from then on. It depends where we stay. Do we only stay on the words, philosophy, or do we actually want to go deeper and experience something that is beyond words? But that experience is still a chemical, like a chemical phenomenon. Sounds great to me. As long as the experience is peace, it can be all the chemicals. Actually, it's energetically too. One can experience it throughout the whole head. It would be very interesting, interesting, to connect a physical body when they experience the state of beingness. What happens with the, all the neurons? all the everything uh, scientifically what happens with the right and left side of the brain when there is an experience of eternal peace I've, I've never nobody connected this form so I don't know although I can recognize that there is an experience that there is more the present just washes the body and it's there is a presence that affects the right and left side of the brain and the face and the whole it can be the whole physical form you get saturated in it now one can say it's all imaginary in the mind it is an experience and let's say it's imagined it's a pleasant or it's beyond pleasant experience means None of the experiences that I've experienced through the senses, externally, come closer to this direct experience. Then, and I recognize that it's peaceful. There's no excitement. It's not high and low. It's stable. It's changeless. And it's always available if the attention is on it. It's not available when the attention is on the thoughts, ideas, and beliefs, or when I, I am focused about the past and the future. So, it's again, it's ordinary. This is why I ask people, what are they looking for? Understanding would not give you the experience. The understanding would quiet the mind from its doubts so it can rest, into this eternal peace. Sure, I, I, I agree with everything that you say, um, but I would still emphasize that that it's 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 a neurobiological experience. Sounds, uh, you know, so, um, sounds good. This idea <laughs> sounds good because I recognize when I experience the silence of awareness, this idea is gone. What idea? Of this is narrow, narrow biological phenomena, and it's of the brain, and it's a, all of all no, of the hey. story. <laughs> no, hey, I'm, I'm just putting it into words, but but, but I mean, you know, I, I, this is perhaps not the venue to discuss it, but I mean, you know, there, there you, you talk about these experiments; they are being done. I mean, you know, it's called transcranial magnetic stimulation, where you actually put magnets on different parts of the brain, and you can arouse feelings of joy, feelings of depression because you're altering neurochemistry in parts of the brain that are responsible for emotion, called the amygdala. It's, and I'm talking people, about awareness. Sure. The thoughtless state of mind. Sure. Um, there are also uh, studies being done on, as you're well aware, um, 
people who the monks who meditated for years and years and years to see how the brain changes. But it is still the brain that is changing. You know, if you look at a monk that has been meditating for more than 10,000 hours, there are certain changes in particular parts of the brain that we believe now are responsible for that sensation, that, 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 that um, emotion uh, of, of um, unity, that, that oceanic oneness that people talk about. Equally, there are studies that show that certain parts of the brain in epileptics uh, misfire and give them a sense that they've seen God and they've seen lights and they've seen divinity. Again, uh, drawing back to the same conclusion, I think, that all of these phenomena, whether it's a state of awareness, whether it's a state of peace, whether it's a state of anger, are generated internally from uh, um, parts of, of, of the brain. No? Maybe stimulated from the mind. Because if I go back to your conclusion of what the, the medical and anyone who observes themselves recognize that the state of the mind affects the body for heart attack, heart disease, different so if it's the mind affecting the physical body because the, the way it goes with cause and effect thought when you identify it is the cause, the effect is an emotion emotion is always a physical reaction in the body it turns to be the cause and the effect is reactivity of negative thoughts in sure. the mind. Sure. So now we see a whole closed circle, right? Sure. Yet the first phenomena was the thought that caused sure. the, the physical. So if I take it to thought and the brain, I say, okay, who is first? So sometimes would be the thought would be first and then there would be the effect would be physical. And sometimes we see somebody get damage in the brain and the brain turns to be the cause now and the gap or there's lack of thinking or lack of ability to communicate communicate mentally is the effect yes we see that yes. yeah so but, but, the, but what, the mind and the brain are one okay the, the brain the brain creates the mind that's because okay that, if the no. if the brain creates the mind what does it mean? So when the body dies, the, there is no more mind. So yes. a human being basically is born, and there is no. You don't think there is reincarnation. There is one birth. Absolutely. One birth. Absolutely. Okay, and uh, I, I guess you've never seen past lives of yours. You never seen it. You never experienced it. Yeah. No, there will be projections of my mind. Yeah, that's obvious. If I did, that's that's clear. I, I, I mean, you know, when 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 uh, when I'm operating and, and the anesthetist uh, gases somebody, okay, to put them to sleep, you can actually count and observe when that that brain loses consciousness and loses its mind because it's not aware. If you ask the person questions that are insightful, that require thinking, you can actually grade when the mind disappears as a result of putting the brain into a state of, of deep sleep. So how come there is so many evidence today? Sometimes there was, there was a child, they anesthetized her, they did an operation. When she woke up, she told them exactly the inside of her body, exactly what they did, everything. She saw it from above. How come you explain that? Because uh, I can't explain it, but the, 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 the rational argument is that there are certain states that, that, that uh, certain uh, individuals in whom uh, the anesthetic doesn't work as effectively at the, at the dose that you're expected to. So they are pain-free, but they are still consciously aware. Except that she was totally asleep. Do sure. some research. She was asleep. The anesthesia worked on her perfectly. She came out. She told them exactly the inside of hers, which she never saw, even if she wasn't, even if she wasn't anesthetized fully. She couldn't see the inside because she was above. She saw them exactly what was happening in the operating room, exactly what they did, exactly everything. How would you explain that? 
I, I can't explain that particular one, but we, I, I, I have individuals who have that, and, and in nine times out of ten, we've worked out that it is simply that we didn't put them to sleep, or the mind was still awake and listening to the conversations of the surgeons, and before the patient went to the, was gassed, they were aware of who was where and what. They can hear sounds of, of needles and cutting instruments. There are lots of rational explanations for it. I, ca I can't explain the one you talk about. But in the majority, it is my opinion, it has been uh, scientifically explained. I'm not, I'm not arguing, I, even, if, even if there is a projection of, of, of somebody above themselves and, and, and what have you, it's still, I believe, um, a biological phenomenon. Now, it, 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 for me, uh, the, the purpose of, 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 of chatting to you is, is, is simply also to, to reaffirm that it, it doesn't detract from the philosophical argument of resting in awareness, of, of being, because I see the advantages. Just in my, you know, I, I, I'm a very practical person. On a day-to-day -day basis, I see it if we give advice to patients to, to, to you show them the mirror to say, look, this is how you're behaving. This is what it's done to you. Um, you know, um, if you take an alcoholic and you say, this is what it's done to your liver, this is what it's done to your social, your marriage, this is what it's done to your children, and you get them to see it and then to step back. It, 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 it's a sort of a neurocognitive behavioral approach in terms of being mindful. You know, I don't want to use a philosophical or religious term, just to say, just watch what you're doing. And I think that in itself um, provides benefit without having to use, you know, higher minds and, 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 and awareness and, and, and unity and, 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 and it's simply a biological step-by-step -step approach to say look at what you're doing and how you're killing yourself yeah this is why i say uh, the way i live simply the way i live life in a simple way <laughs> yes is i discriminate internally what causes me stress and what enables me to experience peace and i'm naturally drawn to peace so if something causes me stress i discriminate it i examine it because it's in my mind and then when i see it for what it is to be not real an illusion then i can the mind can rest and rest in peace so I'm drawn to peace. But Alon, um, uh, uh, if I were to if I were to argue that there are certain genet there are certain traits, you know, there are certain characters. There are angry characters. There are peaceful characters. There are angry babies. There are uh, babies that cry at birth, and and, and, and uh, psychologists tell us that they can tell um, fairly predictably how a child is going to develop from the way it behaves as a baby, which has, again, arguments by behavioral psychologists that a lot of, for example, you like the, the peaceful approach, you like the insightful approach, you like the self-inquiry approach. Um, what if that turns out to be a genetic trait that you have, that you've inherited, that there, that there is a tendency in some people to seek conservatism, to seek um, being an introvert, to seek uh, meditation, whereas there are other types that, that you know, go out and want to, to, to set fire to things, that, that want to go out and, 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 and misbehave. It might be a neurobiological trait, surely. So, I, we know I've, I've been graced then. Sorry? I've been graced then. Graced. It's due to grace. Grace. Grace, yes. No, I think it's fine. You know, you the, about the, what thing is, the thing is that I'm just like anybody else. I've seen so much anger within and so much frustration and so much uh, uh, rage internally and had to observe it so it clears itself. And I, through life, I get to observe hundreds, sometimes thousands of people through the course of many years to see that everybody have the same mechanism, exactly the same mechanism. Their personality is different, okay? works on the same mechanism. So I, I realized, wow, 
I'm not I wasn't I'm not different than them it's just that I was able to um, meet it uh, not avoid it in being able to confront it and allow it to clear itself so when you say it what is it the anger the rage the frustration attaching to uh, to desires uh, avoiding pain seeking pleasure um, looking for happiness from uh, experiences external from objects of the world and not being satisfying experiencing restlessness experiencing uh, discontent and then working with all of that and start to glimpsing in the beginning and experience something that is much more profound and deep which is silence awareness eternal peace whatever one wants to name it it is an experience it's not a concept in the mind and then from that place because it's absolutely still any thought that appears as name or in form or projection is seen and then if you question that it subsides and the more the, the more the mind rests in awareness that's where one tastes the nectar of life that's all now one can say this is nonsense let me go and do some my business another says let leave me alone I want to go about do my uh, being with my family and another says you know what I'm interested to bo be more peaceful I'm interested to experience more harmony with what is I'm interested to be clear be clear with every thought that arise I'm interested to learn how to discriminate my ideas and beliefs in an ordinary way I just want to experience more peace that's all and it's what's the, ca the a catalyst of all of it is the desire so if I desire to make money I'll, I want desire for peace because then I will I, when I desire a particular thing I will put my energy and time into it and this is why I ask people what do you really want what is the burning desire within and some would say I would like to save the world and some would say I would like to be clear I'd like to experience harmony and that way from there to help people and some would say I want to be angry because that motivates me to be achieve what I want or I need the fear to motivate me to create things and I say all is well good luck whatever one chooses I don't think one is higher than another I think eventually one would come to the realization that unless they really know who they are by experience no matter what they know is lost and the only thing that remains is their experience of their existence because you don't need to ask me if you exist because the existence is the basis of everyone's being so nobody needs another to say excuse me do you know if I exist no the existence of who you are is uh, fundamental and unless I know that I am this existence not as an idea then I know everything and if I I know everything except that I am existence consciousness bliss then I don't know anything so this is why in the beginning someone say mm, this is all philosophy then I tell them you might be right it's not what I experience this is why I'm not interested in philosophy I'm interested to experience the peace within me which I recognize that it is a, what's natural and everything that I thought that is natural is actually ignorance is because I forgot who I am and the ideas and the beliefs and the opinions I had that was ignorance that wasn't the natural state of the being of who I am 
one would say it's only mind and it's the brain I say okay within the body and the framework of this body in this life moment by moment I choose to experience peace and when I don't experience the peace I have to examine it and not feed that energy because then it uh, escalates and evolves because if somebody is frustrated if you have an argument with somebody and then you walk away and you keep the argument in your mind you go out and you ask people to va or you share it to validate your argument you perpetuate it most of the time as any human being yet if you are in argument you realize whoa this caused me tension and I'm seeking peace then I wouldn't go and feed this energy well um, uh, I agree um, but it's, 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 it's still a choice I mean you know you, you the word I keeps coming up and then it's still I choose peace I choose that's right restfulness and it's still the I yes uh, it's still about it's still whatever you want to call the I whether it's a bigger I or a smaller I or a higher I it's still the I that chooses it but you, you, you know that, that um, and you, you're talking about self-inquiry it's a very difficult thing to do uh, but but I agree with you that if you, if you do constantly examine your thoughts um, you realize that you are a victim of your own thoughts in a lot of things, uh, whether it's the career you choose, whether it's the fact that, but you know, sometimes along um, uh, what you call your burning desire may be premeditated. You may have, you, you may have a predisposition towards, um, you know, it, 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 it's a fact uh, of, of, of psychology that, that um, um, uh, um, Men who beat their wives have been beaten in childhood, or somebody who uh, somebody who gets divorced is more likely to get divorced again when they remarry, or somebody who marries uh, uh, an abusive husband often leaves that abusive husband and marries another abusive husband, and it's, it's because of what happened in childhood. So many of the influences and your burning desire or my burning desire is not what really is a burning desire. It's inherited from your upbringing and what, what influences you have. Again, biologically, that determines whether you go into a particular career, whether you want to become a gambler, whether you want to become a monk. All I'm saying, Alon, is, 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 is uh, I agree with you that, that self-inquiry needs to occur. But I, if I can just turn the tables around a little bit and say, if you, if you yourself uh, do it on a daily basis, how do you function in terms of emotion, attachment, uh, your family, day-to-day um, uh, -day activities? Um, because they all come to virtually zero. Because because they all have implications. If you if you uh, if you apply emotion or attachment to a particular thing, individual, association, or philosophy, there are consequences to that. So, let me answer the question. First of all, I notice and I go to the past that I'm barely emotional. I, I'm not emotional. Barely. And I used to be very emotional, like this. Very up, up and down. No emotion means I don't I notice that there is no identification with the thought, then there's no emotion, so there's no body sensation. Exactly. exactly. So how do you then function? Very simple. Functioning happening by itself. Just by itself. A thought can arise, I take action, I'm not emotional about it. And then I notice that even family, I just accept them as they are. And even if they want different things, I hear what they say and I'm not reactive about it. So I experience peace and I experience uh, understanding and I experience accepting them as they are without wanting anything from them. Even wanting them to be different causes me stress. So when I don't have this, I experience a... Uh, 
peace with what is as it is just as it is ordinary also I don't experience that I'm a victim of the thoughts because the experience I have is that I am awareness not the thoughts this is what I experience I am awareness not the thoughts so I'm not anymore a victim of the thought in the past I was not only a victim of the thoughts I was the slave the grand slave there wouldn't be any slave better than me than to my thinking when I identified with the thoughts yet I don't experience that anymore and if it appears it just noticed in instantaneously and pass away so it doesn't last more than an appearance only but then you but then surely you become one becomes um, nihilistic one becomes apathetic or lethargic towards life because the things that drive most individuals or that drive society is indeed desire and attraction and, and want um, they they come a cropper and and, 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 and they have they are the consequences of those drives and emotions but that is our, is it not our biological fate that you are driven you know by attraction to to, 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 to objects or to people or to uh, standards and goals um, if you lose that is there no uh, do you not develop an inertia towards life? It's, uh, I, I can only share the experience that, yes, I lose interest and uh, it doesn't drive me. And uh, if there's still vasanas, habits that drive me, I watch them. And some I take actions and some I don't, yet none of it really lasts. So nothing really drives me. And anything that I even try or people try to create around me, I notice it doesn't last, it collapses, it destroys. Means I'm not a good uh, creator. Not really. So anything I create, after some time I destroy, I say nonsense, I don't put energy into it. Or some, somebody comes with an idea, I say nice idea, you go and manifest it, I'm not interested. And then people say, let's go and do that. I say, you go do that. I'll be just as it is. And it doesn't make me lot, 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 and large. What is the word? I, apathic. Lot, yeah. Please again? Lethargic. Lethargic. On the contrary, I experience uh, aliveness. I experience presence. I experience kindness. I experience empathy, I experience understanding, and I'm serving. I'm serving people, not with the idea that I have to serve, I'm just available. And I'm available to listen and be. And, um, and another thing that I experience uh, being uh, fearless. Fearless means mm, I recognize that it doesn't really matter what happens. So I welcome whatever, whatever is supposed to happen, I welcome it fully. It doesn't really matter. And um, I live ordinary life. For somebody would be, say, boring. I'm, I'm interested to walk barefoot on the earth. I like to be walking on the ocean and breathe clean air and eat live vibrant organic foods if it's available and if it's not it doesn't really matter I um, I don't eat meat I don't eat chicken I'm I don't eat any living uh, products I'm, I'm not interested to kill an animal in order to be sat for my own addiction or satisfaction of habit I'm not drawn to it and I feel vibrant energy and the most important I experience an eternal peace and I recognize this is me not as an individual it has no boundaries and the more the mind rests in that the more grace there is that's all ordinary 
Boring. <laughs> Not so ordinary, mate. Um, it, 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 yeah. but, but, but you set aside 99% of the population. Then. You know, people like us who, are, 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 who go to work every day, who have a family, who, who have, you know, um, perhaps wrongly needs and wants and desires. Uh, I, I, I wanted to just ask you, um, since uh, uh, we're talking about this, uh, and you're right, that simply understanding what the mind is doing doesn't stop the mind from doing it. You know, um, which This is I think just is the a problem. first step. Excuse me? This understanding how the mind operates is the first step. I have to stop feeding the energy to it. Like a dog, if I don't give it the food, it will starve. So I have to stop feeding that energy in the mind. That's a must, yes. But it's, it's, it's that, it's that, 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 uh, it's that link along that often goes missing because there are a lot of patients of mine that, that uh, misbehave, but they are educated, they're articulate, they are intelligent, they can read entire books about how they should behave, but they don't do it. So the, the, the switch from understanding and self-inquiry to, to, to um, incorporate into your daily practice is where I see all of these things going wrong, whether it's philosophically or from a religious perspective, everything that you say makes sense. Everything that you say about examining your thoughts and watching what they do to you makes sense. But, but uh, um, merging the two into action is very difficult. And I think that's the problem. That, that you know, you, 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 I, I'm not sure how you do it, um, because it, it would seem to me, um, just from the outside in, it would appear fairly sterile in terms of, of, of day-to-day -day activity because nothing affects you, nothing uh, uh, implodes within you, nothing uh, annoys you, irritates you, angers you, uh, draws you, um, produces desire in you. Um, it, it would seem very sterile, but you're saying it's not because it seems very hermetically sealed. That uh, the only thing that produces desire in me is an idea that I have that I like. I don't understand that. The only thing that produces a desire within me is an idea that appears and I like that idea, then I want that idea. And I follow right. and I take action. And uh, the desires that within me are minimized for some reason because I stopped feeding them because I saw their defects. And the other thing is that um, that the practice has to be continuously. Yes. And what I find is this is where it's the most challenging for the most people. Even the people that come here and daily practice, they can practice and we sit for three hours and there's sharing and there's stillness meditation and there's they experience who they are and they walk out from here and they forget and the habit fall and now they have to why why the habit because 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 i say the same thing about my patients that they will behave the day they the day before they come to see the doctor they will behave so the sugar is okay the blood pressure is okay but you know that they've been misbehaving because you see them uh, misbehaving outside the clinic why does it happen not enough uh, readiness not enough readiness you mean desire yes not enough readiness is if like fruit all fruits ripe in different times so not have all the lemons ripe at the same time on the tree. So it's ripeness, uh, earnestness, uh, determination, um, desire. Desire is is the is the the cause of the cause of it. Yes. So desire there there is a desire in you of a particular type. It's not a desire for a person or an object or uh, an acquisition it's a, it, but it's still a desire it's still a, it's still a base emotion that's no it's not emotional at all it's not rational because i see that all living beings desire to be happy always and i i'll i'll keep, i'll stay on the basic of food 
if you starve somebody and you give them food and their stomach is full they're happy satisfied so seven billion people on the planet or somewhat I don't know exact the numbers everybody wants to be happy always everyone is doing everything they do to be happy so you ask people why do you work try to save people's life because if you save one person in that moment you feel satisfied happy why do you want to get married because if I'll get married I'll be happy that's what I imagine why do I want to have children because if I will have children I imagine that I'll be happy because the way desire works desire is an activity of the mind and then it's supported by the imagination so if I get what I want I'll be happy and, and I don't recognize that when I get what I want the desires subside and the lack of desires enables me to have a glimpse of the happiness and that happiness is who I am yet if I go through the same outside externally to the objects of the world it creates a veiling and I think it's because I achieved something I'm happy because I got this object I'm happy because I and it's that's the illusion it's not accurate so that's what I see because I see it from within all around the people can come and tell me you know what you're wrong and you know what I'll tell them I hear what you say and that's not what I experience and if you want to experience something different and you want to see for yourself you have to take a look from within and uh, and and see for yourself I cannot make somebody else see I can only take them to the point of view and from there they will have to see with their own eyes so if I see the moon you, you cannot see it unless you look at the moon and you actually see it for yourself this is where it comes this is why I say people come and I can just be an inspiration or um, a guide I'm just a tour guide this is what I'm working at I'm guiding people to look within and experience who they are so the journey is within somebody else there's many tour guides they take you to the Himalaya no difference that's all and I don't claim yes, to be I, I, I don't claim to be enlightened then I don't claim to I just recognize that I am awake the one who is awake is awake to itself that's all aware and it's not a thought and the thought says I am aware yet I recognize that the thought that says I am aware is not the awareness that's all or ordinary <laughs> ordinary <laughs> stay with ordinary <laughs> <laughs> because there is still, you know, you, 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 you. <clears throat> it's like people that have had these discussions with you on, on your site and talk about enlightenment. There is still somebody who recalls this enlightenment. It's, there's still an I there. There is still wh whatever I you want to talk about. It's a is thought. I, I is just a thought, yes. So for communication purposes, I can say I'm hungry, yes? No, the body is hungry. So, mm, I recognize that the thought can never eat, so it's never uh, hungry. So I say, I'm hungry, would you like to go and let's make a meal? And you say yes, yet when I speak it, I see that it's not true. So I don't believe that it's real. That's it, I recognize there is a fire hunger in the body, that's all. So I communicate, I'm hungry. What about you? Would you like to go and eat? some bananas or mango or fruit or papaya that's all you know, but, you, but you could say that about you could say that about everything in life you, know? you could say uh, I do uh, but, 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 but as a result um, we wouldn't have uh, the diversity
diversity of culture and society uh, that we have. If everybody I do not know short that. Of, of, hmm? I do not know. I do not know that. And the fact is, it's not my business what we will have. I notice there is diversity, as long as I perceive it. So as long as I perceive it, there is diversity. And when there is no perceiving of anything other than who I truly am, then there is no diversity. There is a, just awareness, eternal peace. And then the senses perceive objects and they experience eternal peace. Okay, let, let me just, um, we're, we're <laughs> going to come to a close now because I know that you must, your body must be hungry. Um, I didn't know that. <laughs> no, I'm the doctor. Um, <laughs> nice. If, 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 if you, as a, if, if individuals pursue this line of thinking, philosophy, way of life, there would be no uh, marriages, there would be no children, there would be no procreation, there would be no society. I do not, because there would I be do no not know that. This is your conclusion based on imagination. I do not know that. It's based on what you told me. That you, you, you don't perceive a desire for an individual, a person, the need for children, the need for uh, attachment. That translates to uh, a lack of functioning in life. No? No. Functioning just happens. The mind says, I'm doing it all. So say, I'm sitting when the body is sitting. I'm walking when the body is walking and the mind is meanwhile wandering to the past or the future. Yet the mind says, I'm walking. And if I won't think about it, I won't be able to walk. When in fact, thought is wandering and the body is still wa wa walking. Sure, sure, absolutely, absolutely. Let's take another example. You, you, uh, you have an attraction for somebody and you stop yourself short and say, no, it's just my mind that is deluding itself into that attraction. So you stop that attraction, right? Yeah, I don't take action. You don't take action? Because I'm not attracted, I'm, I'm not I'm never attracted to a physical body. I'm attracted to my conceptual image I like about the body and Absolutely. now... I like this conceptual image, so I take action. Yet if I see that and I don't take action, eventually it would not have any power and it subsides. And then I experience peace. It's much more mm, delicious. No, absolutely. <laughs> so, so then what happens is, 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 is you function as an individual. You don't function as a family or or uh, husband and wife, or, or whatever it is, and you don't have children. I, I'm, I'm coming at it from a biological perspective. You then, yeah. you then don't perpetuate society. You don't perpetuate a population, surely, if you follow that particular line of thought. Maybe. Maybe, I do not know. <laughs> I do not know. Truly, honestly, I do not know. And it doesn't really matter, because anyway... I recognize that the waking state is just a longer dream than the dreaming state. When, you're, sure. when you are a little bit either in darkness for some time, yeah, if you practice being in the fully dark, you start merging the dreaming and the waking state. You don't know which one is what and you see they're the same. And also if you go into silence for some longer period of time, your dreams become very vivid and then you wake up you realize you don't know anymore what's the difference and you come to see that what appears the waking state is just a projection of the mind that appears externally because the five senses are open yet in the dream I'm projecting a whole subtle world that is individual to me and it appears totally real until I wake up so, the concern about not perpetuating in this world means, for me, not perpetuating the dream sounds pretty good. To wake up from the dream, I don't need to perpetuate and feed the dream and look for continuity in the dream when actually my true nature is continuous 
omnipresent. The only reason why the mind is seeking continuity because it is looking for the source that is continuous in the desires of the objects of the world. It is looking for continuity. This is why I had a desire, I wanted to have something that will continue for many generations to come. What a dream. I'm continuously. Who I am is changeless awareness. So when I fix the attention on that, and the more I reside as that, the experience that I never came, I never move, and I never go. I never was born. I never will die. Because in the experience, it is changeless. Nothing ever happened. Yet unless one experiences it, this would be mere theoretical concept. And I understand. What can I say? What can I do? This is why Buddha said, come, sit, observe the breath, look within, and see for yourself. And then they ask him, what will, will be after, or what they ask him, so what would I get from it? So he says, enlightenment, or the end of suffering, he pointed. And he says, and then what? And then he pointed, find out for yourself. This is all all that uh, one can do and it's again what they desire and I respect whatever one desire yet I see that most of the desires of people collectively for all of us is due to ignorance and we do a lot of harm due to this desire ignorance of what? of who I am I forgot who I am and I desire so many things and I'm greedy and I'm willing to hurt people and I'm willing to hurt animals and I'm willing to destroy just because I forgot who I am. I forgot that I am complete, perfectly complete. So I'm looking to refill the, by parts this completion. It's never going to stop unless the mind rests in this fullness of awareness. Now, each one, whatever they have to go through, they will go through. It's, I'm not uh, trying to convince anyone of anything. And no, on the contrary, somebody would say, you're wrong. I say, you know what, you're right. If whatever serves you, serves you in your life, continue. Yet if someone looks within, they realize that their mind is insane and it serves them temporarily and causes them more harm than good when they identify with their thoughts and ideas and beliefs. Even if it's the ideal belief, then it's mostly conflict ridden. Conflict. How so? When I want something, I don't want what is. And because the ego is driven by desire, I want what I don't have and I don't want what I have. So when I want what I don't have, it's a conflict ridden. And this is why there is so much collective negativity and aggression. Because if I want you to be different and you're not, I'm upset now, I'm frustrated. This is aggression. Now I will be either aggressive violently with me or I take it out to you. This is ignorance. Look what humanity is fighting. For what? They're protecting their belief system. This is not wisdom. This is ignorance. This is not an enlightened society without this technology. This is darkness with technology. So this is what I see. You look around, you see. You, you, you. Anyone that is a little bit, look how much torture, killing, abusing there is on this planet. Well, it's less than it was before. I do not know that. It's true. I don't know. But, but anyway, I, 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 I agree with you. But, but one has to always ask a question, and maybe this is the concluding uh, 
comment it, it, it is is through millennia and through the centuries since man became civilized if you want to use the word civilized um, the, the raw basic emotions have remained unchanged which makes one assume that there is a biological basis to some of these emotions you know the desire to have what somebody else has the desire to covet the desire to steal the desire to better oneself the desire to compare oneself we all know and we've discussed that all of these are illusions they're illusions of the mind the illusions of memory the illusions of seeing and hearing and the mind creating uh, all these models uh, in itself but if one looks historically along the same thing happens again and again and again and again in spite of all this all the religions and all the philosophy just like you said you will have all your workshops and your retreats and 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 they will walk out of the or they'll drive out of the retreat and they'll be hooting at each other and shouting at each other what is it is it something that we cannot overcome in the majority of us that that you know 6.9 billion people perhaps uh, 100 million are enlightened or awake the rest of them just behave like they were um in the paleolithic era yes there are rare individuals who transcended it and these rare individuals give us an example to uh, get the mind return into this light and the ones who follow and make it um, not a part-time job a commitment full commitment uh, for returning the mind to rest into this light they are the victorious one all the rest behave like animals they they work to eat and eat to work all around body identification slaves slaves of their desires slave of their mind they cannot stop even the insanity of the mind they have to take all kind of pills and all kind of um, this is a disease and we see how much disease there is on the planet and the disease is mentally and emotionally and then it comes out physically too and this is what we see we see it all across the board everywhere I walk we forgot even to live in a in a unity together sharing more and more individual sharing there's no sharing what can I gain instead of giving and everything and the majority of the people are blinded by money which is non-existent and has no real value everybody chase it like this is going to give them salvation it's nonsense no trading giving receiving on what's what's natural but i don't think it's more uh, alone i think it's the same uh, you know I, I don't think that right. man's greed right it's uh, the I, same you know why because the cycle of birth and death doesn't end unless the mind returns to eternal peace you're right this is why um, it's the same this is why I see the mind just take a different body just like you change different clothes every day every day is just a gap between deep sleep state means deep sleep state is between two waking states death is between two birth and because I've seen past lives and many people around when they do the work seen it and uh, there's testimonies of people who were very skeptic and very influenced by Western science and uh, there's a uh, someone in the US that was a a hypnotherapist and he started documented a uh, by hypnosis different uh, past lives and it took him many years to reveal it he reveal it he recorded like 26 or 27 people and um, uh, I see that the mind doesn't need a physical body to continue and it leaves the physical body in the dream anyhow and um, you cannot un grasp it and understand it unless you go within so I realized that the only way out is in otherwise there is no way to get out of this maze that the mind created by itself
This the trouble is a lot of people don't know how to do that. The trouble is, you know, um, I, I, I think um, increasingly our society has given us crutches and, and we therefore increasingly assume that there is a pill or there is a doctor or there is something out there that can help them. Um, and we've forgotten the internal tools because only you can help yourself. That's right. The trouble is that a lot of people can't help themselves. That, that, that's what I see. Um, and uh, I, you, you, you talk about uh, when the fruit is ripened, it will drop, etc. What is it that makes some people more ready than others? I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm not a... I see it's evolution. It's evolution of what? The mind is not evolving <clears throat> enough. So when people cannot help themselves, I understand it. I understand that they cannot help themselves. So right now, in that moment, when they cannot help themselves, they don't need the help. When they'll be able to help themselves, all the help will come into them to help them. Except they need to want. And even people tell me they want, yet their action is exactly opposing what they want. And that's what they have to go through in order to learn what they have to learn and experience what they have to experience. I see that everything happens in a perfect timing, not moment before, not moment after, the moment it happens. So I don't argue with that. I don't fight with that. I just see it, embrace it, and understand. So one can say I'm compassionate about it except without being attached to it. So being compassion is having this passion. Without feeling bad or pity or having a, this is shouldn't happen. No, this is how it is. And this is also going to change. Yet in their base, their core of their being, everyone is changeless awareness. Whether they come to realize and experience it, or not, I do not know. I cannot make it. It's up to them. Yes, um, I think I should leave it there. Um, and um, um, I'd be delighted to come back and, and converse with you about other things as well, but I think I've taken a lot of your time up uh, this afternoon. Sounds great. Maybe you before we talk again, I invite you to read the non-dual reality, the lamp of non-dual reality. Take this book, read it, take your time to read it, understand. Means see from within what this book is pointing at. Nobody knows who wrote this book. And uh, Ramana Maharshi was one of the greatest sages in India or very respectful uh, sage um, recommended this book as a very valuable book a book just points your attention to look within that's all it doesn't you don't want to adopt any concept from the book just read the book and allow it to turn your attention within because of that book and examine challenge it from within with your own eye, without your, the dogmas or anything from the past, just examine it for the first time, every time from within, and then we can talk, because a lot of the mechanism that is pointed in the book, and it has many layers, and it's very, it has depth, is all internally inside you. You don't need science for that. All the knowledge in, is inside you. So, look within and, and check. Some books for you. Thank you. And then perhaps we can also discuss it from a from a biological perspective. Sounds good. I'll be more than happy and open. Honestly, I I think you know um, I would definitely read it, but I, I I would love to encourage you to read a particular you know a, a, a few easy to understand. I, you know, it, it would be just nice to discuss it. So why don't you send me the name of the book so I'll, I'll take a look if I can get a hold of them. I'll send you the book if you need it. That's, that's fine. I'll, I'll give you the name of the author and um, um, take a look and see. I mean, okay. you know, it's, it's, 
um, very interesting neurobiological research. And I think you would agree, but um, uh, let's make a plan to meet once I've read this book. I'll be more than happy to take a look of the book. And I can send you the address as well. Okay, that's fine. Send me the address, I'll send the book to you. Sounds great. Thank you very much. All the very best. Thank you for your kindness and openness. Thank you. And thank you for your time. Thank you.